today. In this episode of the YouTube Hobo Show, I am going to show you how easy it is to use an SWR meter. However, be forewarned that this video is going to make some people very, very angry. And that is because some people feel very strongly that only licensed ham radio operators should be permitted to talk about SWR meters or antennas or anything like that in public. Because according to some people, if a person has not memorized the 35 multiple choice questions on the ham radio operators test, that person is not qualified to talk about such mysterious things as SWR meters or antennas on YouTube or in public or anywhere. And that is exactly why I am here to help you see how easy some of this stuff really is and to remind everyone that some people are just morons. To demonstrate how to use an SWR meter, I will be using this inexpensive Farzometer 2000, pronounced Farzometer 2000, which costs around $60. And I will also be using this slightly more expensive Rig Expert AA650 Zoom Antenna Analyzer, which costs around $750. Now, before I get started, allow me to make one very important point. What I am about to show you applies to mobile or base station antennas. That means car antennas and the big antennas that you put on the roof of your house. What I am about to show you does not apply to handheld radio antennas. Allow me to elaborate. Most handheld antennas are designed to be used while attached to the radio and while the radio is attached to your hand. And this is because the antenna uses the radio and your hand and your head and all of your body parts as the ground plane. And because of this, when you remove the antenna from the radio and connect it to your SWR meter or antenna analyzer, even if you are using a ground plane plate, such as this, which comes with some SWR meters, even with the plate, it is very likely that the SWR reading you get will be much inaccurate. So what I am saying is, do not bother trying to check the SWR on an HT or walkie-talkie antenna, because the reading that you get will probably be wrong. So now that we have all the warnings out of the way, let us begin. To measure the SWR on your mobile or base station antenna with a SWR meter, simply connect the radio to the transmit or inside of your meter using the least amount of connectors and adapters as possible and connect the other side to the antenna portion of your meter. Radio, minimal amount of connectors or patch cords, meter, antenna. As you can see for my demonstration, I am using a handheld radio, but I am not checking the SWR of the handheld radio antenna that comes with it. I will be testing the SWR on a Midland MXT26A antenna, one of my favorite GMRS antennas, because the Midland MXT26A comes tuned almost perfectly for GMRS right out of the bag, and you usually do not need to cut or adjust them in any way. The MXT A26 antenna is what I have on my Jeep and it has many, many FARs. So after connecting the antenna and the radio to your meter, you simply turn on your radio, press the transmit button. You wanna make sure that your meter is on. You then press the transmit button and you will see the SWR. Your meter may look different. The Farzo meter 2000 shows the SWR here. It also shows some other information that we're not concerned with for the purposes of this video. What we are concerned with is the SWR. And in this case, the SWR is reading 1.01 .01 to 1. If you are using an antenna analyzer, the process is very similar. You connect it to the antenna. There is no need for a radio as the antenna analyzer does all the heavy lifting. You select the correct option and you press go. And in this case, the AA650 zoom is reading an SWR of 1.23 to 1. Now you sharp-eyed viewers may recall that on the Farzometer 2000, it was reading an SWR of 1.01 .01 to 1. 
and the rig expert is reading 1.2 to 1. The Farsometer 2000 is not a highly accurate piece of equipment. Remember, the Farsometer 2000 only cost about $60. Affiliate link below. And the rig expert is a much more accurate piece of machinery. That is one of the reasons why it costs $750. The point is, however, for most normal people, an inexpensive SWR meter such as the Barzometer 2000 is good enough. They are close enough for normal people purposes. Most normal people do not require perfection. It only has to be close enough and an inexpensive meter is good enough for that. No matter what some people tell you. So as you have just seen, using your very own eye holes, using either an SWR meter or an antenna analyzer is very simple, but taking the SWR measurement is the easy part. The hard part is knowing what your SWR should actually be. And the reason that is the hard part is because if you have ever looked online to figure out what a good SWR reading is, you likely ran into some people. But do not despair, I am about to explain to you in just a few sentences what some people usually need 10 or 20 paragraphs to explain. An SWR reading of 1 is a perfect SWR reading. And that means that 100% of the RF electricities coming out of your radio are actually squirting out of your antenna. However, it is rare to get a perfect 1 to 1 SWR. So as you can see by the colored visualizations on the much expensive antenna analyzer, any SWR reading below three or so is fine for most normal people using normal radios. An SWR of three or lower means that most of the RF electricities are able to squirt out of your antenna. An SWR higher than three in the red zone means that a lot of the RF electricities are not making it into the antenna and are instead crawling back down the wire and hiding inside your radio, which can cause the radio guts to heat up. And as I have mentioned in many previous videos, guts and heat do not go well together. An SWR of three to six or so probably means you have a very poor ground plane or possibly issues with your connectors or in a worst case situation, both. And when you get up into an SWR reading of 10 or 15 or higher, that usually means a short in your cable or connectors, which is very bad. Now, some people will tell you that if your SWR is not 1.0 to 1, or if your SWR is not perfect, they will tell you that your radio will not work. But the important thing to remember is that some people are idiots. And these idiots always seem to confuse the meaning of the words will not work at all with the words may not work optimally. So just remember that you should try to shoot for an SWR of one to one, but anything around two and a half to three ish is just fine for most of us normal people. If you have any questions about SWR or how to use an SWR meter, leave a question in the comment section. And I'm sure that some people will be happy to leave a 10 or 20 paragraph long answer to your question, basically restating what I just said in a few sentences so that they can show you how smart they think they are.